Guten Tag, Kinder. Ich bin erst auf den CT. Und today we are going to take a look at some of the holster options that you have for the KSK 2010 to 2013 kit. Now, holsters are one of my favorite parts because not only do they hold the secondary either really well or really poorly to your side, but they add a certain level of spice that extends beyond the upper torso to your kit. It is probably one of the lowest hanging things on your belt. So naturally, like the radio pouches, you have a few options. So let's clear off this table and we'll take a look. Let's start least expensive and work our way up to the most expensive. This right here is one of the least expensive options that you could go for, and it does span quite a few eras, but this is especially prevalent in the KSK 2010 to 2013 era that KVB does. This system is comprised of three separate parts that are all relatively common and easy to find, and in fact, you could get right now brand spanking new. To start with the holster, you'll be looking at the Blackhawk CQC holster for the USP or P8. However, what you'll notice, this is sitting on the G-Code mid-ride paddle. I personally love the mid-ride paddle because it puts it at a perfect arm length for me, and I think that that was the intention. The G-Code paddle is very common. You can find it in multiple colors. You will see them in green as well as tan very popularly, um, and they have different belt loop lengths. I would tend to go with the larger one only because some of these won't fit on the battle belts that the KSK uses, but that's a whole nother video. Now, I'm sure you're wondering if you have any experience with holster systems like this is, how in the world do these two pieces connect? Well, what they have is the adapter plate system between the CQC Serpa holsters and the G-Code system. And in fact, this adapter plate system does come in other versions for many other holsters, some of which you'll see later today. This is the GCA 41. You can pick these up for anywhere from 10 to $20, depending on condition and the seller. This will allow any type of Blackhawk Serpa CQC holster to attach to any of the G-Code RTI paddles. Now, all in, you can get one of these holster systems for relatively inexpensive, I'd say roughly the $50 to $60 range if you go for each of the parts individually, or complete. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more depending on where you find them. But this concludes one of the cheapest holster options. Let's take a look at the next level up. This piece is one of my recent purchases and I love it. I am so excited to have one of these. This is one of the Safari Land 6004 drop leg holsters for the HK USP and a light. What light that is, is very specific. And unfortunately, uh, me and my buddies bought what I believe are the last few ones out on retail market. You might be able to find some others, but it is the HK UTL Mark II pistol light. So what this holster does is it has some really good retention as well as nice padding on the inside. The light does fit very securely and it will work with both the Airsoft P8s as well as the Airsoft USPs. You'll also notice that this is a drop leg system, and while the drop leg system was used, you do have paddle options from Safari Land that can be as cheap as $15, or as I mentioned, you can get one of the RTI adapters. I believe the number is a GCA 39, and I have one of those coming in to put on my RTI paddle very soon. Now this holster system is a little bit rarer. You won't be able to find it all brand spanking new. You might be able to find one of the options that does not include the UTL part. Um, and that is technically kosher. I believe I have seen a couple of reference photos of that, but this one is very common with the breacher setups that were used in the 2010, 2011 era. I picked this up for about hundred dollars. I got it on sale. The guy was selling it for 160. He had a Christmas sale um, and I picked it up with a bunch of my friends. Then we did a group order, cleared them out. So uh, I'm sure there will be more that pop up on the market, but you can usually find these for anywhere from the hundred to $200 range. And last, but certainly not least, is a holster setup that is not only used back in 2012, all the way up to modern times, but it's pretty darn rare. And let's take a look at that. This is the Blackhawk Serpa LLMPI holster. Now, what you'll notice is this is also sitting on the same G-Code RTI mid-ride paddle and has the GCA 41 adapter plate. But what makes this holster so special is that it also accepts a light. It does not accept the HKUTL, it accepts the LLMPI, which is the light that the German Bundeswehr has used in multiple forces, again, all the way from 2012 up to modern times. Now these green ones are particularly rare, especially because they have transferred to the tan ones, but you can still find these once in a while on the market for anywhere from 250, probably up to 400 euros. This holster system is kind of cool because not only does it have the standard release that Blackhawk has, but it also has the level three part up top, that hood, so to speak. And if you do find one of these that doesn't have the hood, don't be alarmed because what some KSK members did was they chopped this part off 
um, to get rid of that and only have the LLMPI holster with the standard Blackhawk release on its own. As always, this is not a comprehensive guide to some of the holsters that you'll see from 2010 to 2013. However, these are three of the most common. If you don't see one of these, odds are you'll see one of these or one of these. But if you do find a set of reference photos that do have another holster, go for it. Holsters add a really unique bit to the kit, especially when you get into some of the light systems that the KSK uses. I hope that this was a helpful introduction or helpful guide into some of the holster options that you have. As always, this is Airsoft NCT, and we'll see you in the next one.